Final Fantasy. The very first in the iconic series, one of the most historically important JRPGs of all time and the start of a trending. Classic for its battle mechanics side by side in screens that somehow resemble simple menus. A unique job system was also introduced for your four playable characters. It's a short but fun adventure, still cool to play nowadays, if merely out of curiosity to see how it all began with this franchise. Fantasy Star Another beginning of an iconic series and one of the earliest science fiction JRPGs in existence. It stands out for having a female heroine in a story-driven adventure. You follow Alice in a quest to avenge the death of her brother. Like many other games from this era, it was also cryptic and very hard, especially for its long mazes viewed in first person. A great soundtrack, cast of characters and neat battle mechanics played in turns. Dragon Warrior We're still going with classic starts on important RPG franchises. Dragon Warrior, originally known as Dragon Quest, is probably among the most beloved on the NES. Threw the series into success right from the beginning, revolutionized the industry of turn-based gaming forever, and so it became a pioneer in the genre in Japan as the godfather of them all. Is one. Again, for this era, the Turbo Graphics version is the best, and it will continue to be so until another remake of both games on the PSP. They were known as Is Books 1 and 2, available on the same release of the Turbo Graphics, known as the PC Engine in Japan. Just like in its sequel, we follow the adventures of Adol Kristin into an epic journey in search for the mystical books of Ys. Fantastic game, short adventure, easy to understand with fast-paced action and great controls. Another one with a key cast soundtrack that most fans will never ever forget. Final Fantasy Adventure this is actually Seiken Densetsu 1, the very first mana game in the nowadays revitalized series. It was localized as Final Fantasy Adventure in North America for marketing purposes, maybe to help it sell and gain more attention. It was called Mystic Quest in Europe. I don't see anything wrong with calling it Adventure of Mana, as it was called over 20 years later in its remake for the PS Vita, but whatever. It's a good action RPG with a charming story and characters. It also marked the start of yet another iconic series in the history of the genre. Final Fantasy Legend 2 This is yet another case of a name change for marketing purposes, abusing the Final Fantasy brand. But it is actually a saga game a series of niche RPGs also from Square. This is the very first JRPG I've ever played in my life, and it eventually led me to play many other great games. I never finished it, but I got very far into it, probably because it's quite a challenging adventure. I like the job system at the beginning and how it affected the type of initial party you have. It's battles revolving around turns, with some skills and elemental magic involved. I don't know how important this title could be in history, but it is on mine, so that obviously gives it a very special place in my heart. E3 Wanderers of the East. Yeah, what a terrible and misleading cover. The best version of this game from this era is the remake on the Turbo Graphics. There's also another port in the Sega Genesis released in 1991 as well. Nothing can match the remake on the PSP, however, but you can't go wrong with these year's versions. Once again, we continue the adventures of the Wanderer Adol Kristin in his many ordeals. Side-scrolling action RPG with platforming elements. Controls are very responsive. The pacing is quick. 
The music is mind-blowing for its time. East 3 is definitely one of the best action RPGs of the early 90s, no matter the version you play. Warsong Warsong was the start of the Land Greaser series, very niche and underrated. It was the first one to be localized and last for many many years unfortunately, that is until its recent remake alongside its sequel on modern systems. It is a highly unique strategy RPG that's grid based on really long maps, brutally hard, as it involves small micromanagement of the different types of soldiers you can hire. Knowing which ones to get for each character is always crucial. Story thrown into a political drama from a horrible invasion, leading to a comeback rebellion. And I don't need to explain over and over my love for the tremendously good music playing throughout this excellent game. Final Fantasy IV Known as Final Fantasy II on the SNES, it came about to start a revolution in the genre. It was one of the pioneers of heavily story-driven RPGs, with a major focus on its cast of characters. We follow the struggle of the Knight Cecil, as he slowly realizes the world of politics is nothing but corruption. Inclusive of an impressive evolution of the battle mechanics played in turns, also celebrated for its unique design in some of the bosses. Final Fantasy IV was a masterpiece for its time, it is a very important piece that truly changed the course of history of Japanese role-playing games. Dragon Warrior 3 Even though this third entry was localized in 1991, for some reason they didn't release it until next year. As a matter of fact, it's one of the less discussed titles in the series. Honestly though, I prefer this game over the second one, however, they're both quite challenging and somewhat cryptic. But that's an NES RPG for you, and a classic in the series of the popular Dragon Quest. Dragon Warrior 4 However, the throne remains on one of the most influential RPGs of all time the memorable and beloved Dragon Quest IV that took everything positive from its predecessors and did it right. Story divided into several different characters, meaning it works as an episodic game. Nice world, nice battles, nice interface, nice graphics, nice everything. Dragon Warrior IV is not only the best JRPG of the NES, but also of 1992. Dragon Slayer, The Legend of Heroes The very first Legend of Heroes in existence. Actually, this game shouldn't even be here because it was officially localized by Working Designs in 1992. However, this was late in December, which means most people played it or finished it until 1993. As a matter of fact, most reviews and promotionals date back to January of the same year. So that's the reason why I decided to include it here instead. This is about Prince Logan escaping a raid from an invasion to join a rebellion, become its leader, and fight back for his kingdom. I like calling it the Seventh Saga 2 because it's a ginormous grind fest as well, excruciatingly hard, but with an amazing kick ass soundtrack, fast paced interface, and addictive gameplay mechanics. Secret of Mana one of the most iconic action RPGs ever made, beautiful, charming, and nostalgic. It is Seiken Densetsu 2, a sequel to Final Fantasy Adventure on the Game Boy. There's really no reason to talk about this excellent game on the Super Nintendo, as everybody's already familiar with it, especially thanks to the revival of the series with the most recent collection and a remake it got a few years ago. Lunar, the Silver Star this is it, the first and original version of this lovely classic that most of us met on several different consoles. The Sega CD one was impressive for its time, thanks to its animated cutscenes fully voiced. It brought a new perspective to storytelling since dialogues and character development fell deeper than in most JRPGs of its time. Battles were carried out in turns, side by side, 
but with a unique touch within the positioning of your characters. The Silver Star is definitely one of the best RPGs of 1993, as well as a very influential adventure for many years to come. Shining Force However, I gotta give the throne to a strategy RPG. I'm not saying it's better than the two previous titles, I'm just saying it was more iconic, simply because it popularized grid-based tactical JRPGs in the West before other major titles did. Shining Force was the true start of a memorable and important franchise that tried to offer a friendlier approach to the genre. It came along with a reliable story with a huge cast of characters. Soundtrack was so Genesis, so cool, so rocking. My biggest praise goes to its battle system, with an excellent interface, easy to maneuver, with a new take on the combat animations. Truly a quintessential journey that opened the doors for strategy RPGs into the West. Illusion of Gaia Yet another action RPG, a forgotten gem on the Super Nintendo. Just like with Pop Full Mail, it's a game where you control three different fighters which are very distinct in their skills and abilities. Beautiful story with some really deep moments here and there. The challenge is balanced, so it's also a great entry for beginners into retro RPGs. Illusion of Gaia might as well be yet another revolutionary game of its time and one of the best of this year. Breath of Fire The start of Capcom's iconic and popular RPG franchise, the first in the series that follows the quest of Ryu, the dragon kind, and Nina, the winged girl. Alongside many different characters, together they journey the world to find Ryu's sister and overthrow an evil empire. Turn-based experience with neat battle mechanics, awesome pixel art, neat graphics for its time, and a very memorable soundtrack. Shining Force 2 The sequel to The King of 1993, another excellent strategy RPG but with a different approach. This time the story was lighter, with a younger protagonist and charming cast of characters. Battle system remained the same, just as good as its amazing predecessor. But in my opinion, this one has much better music, which totally represents the Sega Genesis in all its form and glory. Final Fantasy VI At last, the masterpiece, the icon, one of the absolute best RPGs in Final Fantasy of the Super Nintendo and of 1994. A junction of masterful music with storytelling that excels every single game of this generation. Its remarkable and unique cast of characters, their deep and emotional journey, the amazing graphics and pixel art, everything connects perfectly with its battle and gameplay mechanics. Final Fantasy VI was a striking inspiration for role-playing games and one of the most important stories ever made in their history. Earthbound A sequel to a game called Mother, that one remained in Japan until its Wii U digital release. Now, Earthbound is one of the most bizarre RPGs ever created. It takes place in a modern setting with the adventures of Ness and his friends. They get involved into all kinds of wacky situations with all kinds of crazy characters. However, the core of the game is its turn-based battle system played from a first-person view. This fun and obnoxious RPG became a major influence in the genre, as it is remarkable for its charming and strange story. Lunar Eternal Blue 1,000 years after the events of the Silver Star, this sequel follows the adventures of Hero and Lucia in a quest to stop an evil being. Eternal Blue plays very much like its predecessor but with slightly improved graphics and, of course, fully voiced animated cutscenes. 
Also infamous for its, well, nude scenes. Yeah. A great turn-based RPG, on the rated icon of the genre, and one of the best JRPGs of 1995. Breath of Fire 2 One of the hardest JRPGs on the Super Nintendo. Big, big grind fest with an atrocious encounter rate. Nonetheless, it is a fantastic sequel to its iconic predecessor. Following the orphans Ryu and Bo into teenhood, embarking on a quest with Nina from the Winged Clan. An improved battle system was there as it felt more polished. It's tough as nails, but the game grabs you if you prevail and doesn't let you go. Overall, a great sequel on the amazing Super Nintendo. Chrono Trigger The popular game that brought together the developers of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. Many different amazing people work on this enormous project that ended up becoming one of the most historically important JRPGs of all time. Incredible soundtrack, excellent script, charismatic cast of characters, and a memorable battle system to never forget. Fantasy Star 4 – The End of the Millennium I don't care what you say, to me the masterpiece that is Fantasy Star IV deserves the throne of 1995. The game not only became a closure to a major science fiction saga of RPGs, but also the epitome of the series. Everything was done right, from the beautiful graphics to its mind-blowing futuristic soundtrack, way ahead of its time. An exceptional plot with an illustrious party of characters also made a big contribution to its glory. And those manga-style cutscenes, man, they were a very unique way to tell the story. While Chrono Trigger was more of a beginner's RPG, Fantasy Star 4 became a legend among hardcore players. In my eyes, the best video game of 1995. Lufia 2 – Rise of the Sinistrals Lufia 2 is the prequel to its predecessor and a much, much better experience. It follows the adventures of Maxim, destined to vanquish the Sinistrals. It took everything wrong from the first Lufia and corrected it thoroughly. Navigation and controls were great, puzzles were still nerve-wracking but fun nonetheless. Encounter rate was normal and the battle system itself was played in proper turns finally. Let me praise the awesome boss battles with those giant characters, something so memorable and unique in Lufia 2. Undoubtedly one of the best JRPGs of 1996. Super Mario RPG – The Legend of the Seven Stars This masterpiece was the collaboration of Nintendo and Squaresoft and one of the very first JRPGs I ever played. Everything in this game was amazing, from its highly original turn-based battle mechanics involving timing and precision, to its excellent graphics, music and controls. It still feels like a true Super Mario game while delving deep into its role-playing mechanics. Absolutely imperative as one of the last JRPGs localized to North America for the Super Nintendo. Suikoden Ah, the start of my beloved series, it just had to be number one. I still think Mario RPG is slightly better, but I can't resist what spawned my addiction into RPGs. Suikoden changed everything in the shadows while other simple titles got the recognition instead. It offered a heartbreaking story, full of political drama, but with a lot of charisma at the same time. It's three totally different battle mechanics, it's 108 recruitable characters, it's outstanding soundtrack. I think I've praised this series and this game enough to convince you why I believe it's the best RPG of 1996.
Tactics Ogre, let us cling together. This is yet another enhanced port for a Super Famicom RPG we never got. It's built quite a strong reputation over the years for being brutally hard, but also for being the godfather of Final Fantasy Tactics. It's got a really solid story, mature, oriented more for adults, and a very relatable cast of characters. Grid-based strategy will consume your life here as it is very grindy, obviously developed for veterans and hardcore players. Indeed one of the best of its kind in 1997. Wild Arms On the third place we've got the start of another iconic series, dead nowadays and still highly underrated. You already know what this cool game is about, with its three main different characters and their journey across the wild, wild west. But with small science fiction elements. Absolutely a beloved title among the best of 1997. Vandal Hearts One of my personal favorite strategy RPGs, grid-based as well, notorious for three things. First, the variety of mission objectives you'll have on almost every single map, giving the game an enormous dynamic factor. Second, the blood spraying out like crazy whenever somebody dies, which earned it the mature rating. And third, its dark story, full of betrayal around a group of soldiers caught in the middle of a sinister plot. I guess a fourth aspect is the fact that the character design is in manga or anime style, which made it look pretty interesting in my opinion. Vandal Hearts is an addiction of mine and a criminally overlooked hidden gem of 1997. Final Fantasy VII I truly was astonished to learn that these nine were the only JRPGs released in North America this year. I am serious and I still can't believe it. My theory goes to Final Fantasy VII's success, with publishers releasing most of the localized games until the next year. I guess nobody wanted or could compete against one of the most revolutionary RPGs of all time. Pokemon Red and Blue these twins were released in 1996 in Japan, but the localization apparently took two years. They are one and the same game with some usual variations. The very first Pokemon game ever created called Pocket Monsters in its own country of origin. The start of one of the best selling video game franchises in history. Shining Force 3 The controversial third main entry in the Shining Four series. I say controversial because this was divided into three chapters, each released in its own physical game. However, only the first one was localized and most fans outside of Japan missed the rest of the story. A great strategy RPG, perhaps better than its predecessors in some areas, with a remarkable story and unique cast of characters. Only way to play the rest is emulation. So a full release of all three games for modern systems will be more than ideal. Final Fantasy Tactics The revolutionary title in the series, the spin-off that popularized the strategy RPGs in the West. Developed by both Square and the Ogre series creator Yasumi Matsuno, this beloved title changed the world. It was a very hard game, but entirely rewarding and quite addictive to play. Also with an incredibly well-written story, mature, full of war, drama and tragedy. Breath of Fire 3 This is a game that turned out to be more unique than expected. Memorable turn-based RPG with beautiful pixel art and a strange soundtrack mixing jazz, rock and blues, which I love by the way. You know the story already, following Ryu since he's but a little kid 
took his teenage years and finally into adulthood. A very compelling story with strong character progression makes this game one of the best of 1998. Parasite Eve This masterpiece needs no introduction. A sacred creation by Hironobu Sakaguchi and Takashi Tokita based on a Japanese novel. Very unique battle system mixing action with real-time elements. And of course, a fusion between role-playing and survival horror in an outstanding story just full of brilliance. Sino Gears. Don't say you weren't expecting to see this enormous icon in the history of RPGs here. The best science fiction title in the genre, with the best story ever written for one. No other JRPG compares its character development and its mind blowing plot twists. Let's not forget about its incredible soundtrack, its neat battle mechanics, and their amazing combos for each type of character. Xenogears is, perhaps objectively speaking, the most representative game of this year and possibly the absolute best. Grandia Yet another start of a dead franchise nowadays, a personal beginning for many gamers out there charmed the heck out of them with its charismatic cast of characters in their colorful world. Also with a great battle system played in turns, but with a very original touch of manipulating the water. Great music, great story, definitely among the absolute best JRPGs of 1999. Final Fantasy VIII After the ginormous success of Final Fantasy VII, the world was expecting the next major title in the series. It was then when the fans met this weird game quickly becoming a commercial success. I remember it being so loved, but criticized for its focus on the romance and its convoluted battle mechanics. I still love this game nowadays, even though it's considered to be more of a black sheep. Regardless, in 1999, it was undoubtedly one of the best JRPGs ever released. Star Ocean The Second Story Star Ocean 2 was a confusing game because, as the title implies, it appeared to be a sequel. The first one was released on the Super Famicom only in Japan until its western release several years later on the PSP. Either way, this was a standalone title and a fantastic RPG that threw the series into commercial success, mainly for its long and well-written story, its engaging battle mechanics, its beautiful soundtrack, and its 86 different endings. Suikoden 2 At last, the masterpiece, the best JRPG of 1999. The one that lay dormant during many years until fans dug it up and spread the word of its brilliance. Rough translation and poor marketing made it fail at first, with its limited print run making it years later a very rare game. Suikoden 2 took over the awesomeness of its predecessor and did everything completely better. Its three different battle systems were fantastic, its longer and deeper story was fantastic too, its soundtrack, interface, graphics... I swear, I will never get tired of praising this overwhelmingly great JRPG. Suikoden 2 